Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Good? All right. Well, my name is Oscar Ochoa. We're here at Faith Bible Church in Stager, Illinois. We're here to study God's Word. And before we start, let's start in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for another glorious day that you've made. And uh, let us be glad in it. And let us enjoy fellowship here, the... Uh, the words that are that you have provided for us that are eternal and that can help us that can help us in our day-to-day -day lives uh, we're grateful that we have a complete Bible that we can study and apply to like I said our day-to-day -day lives um, thank you for your son that has died for our sins and that we are secure and we have a heavenly hope and we have a heavenly home and let the these words spoken today that are your words resonate in our minds and hearts and we give you honor and glory and thanks in Jesus name amen all right all right we are in first Thessalonians and hopefully we get it all wrapped up there's a lot in here, so we're going to get started right away. Um, but I do want to do a, a quick recap of First Thessalonians. Let's go to chapter 1 of First Thessalonians. And we're, our text is going to be in chapter 5, verse 12 to the end. There's a lot in there, but we're going to kind of cover it. But let's go to chapter 1 in First Thessalonians. And Thessalonica... Uh, was a uh, prominent city in northern Greece. This is a place that was, it's a, this book was written in Corinth. All five chapters have a mentioning of the rapture, which we're going to kind of skim through and look at it. We have a, these churches that Paul, the people that, um, the things that Paul was looking for in churches was that faith, hope, and love. And we're going to kind of go through that real quick and see those. And remember this book, it was written around 51, 54 A.D., around that time. Um, they say it's one of the first books that was written. I don't know if that's true, but they say it's one of the first ones that Paul was writing. And um, these Thessalonians were idolaters, and they went from idolatry and went to having faith in the mystery and learning about this from Paul. They had about three weeks to a month around there that Paul was there and they learned a lot of these truths. So uh, just skimming through this, um, we see that in chapter one of verse three, you see remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. There goes that threefold. So moving forward in verse 9, For they themselves show us what manner of entering in we had unto you. That's Paul saying the things that, we, that you know, when I was there, this is what you've produced. How ye have turned from God, to, how you have turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. So you see that faith aspect there. For, uh, turning to God from idols, and you see that service, that serving aspect, which is the love. And verse 10, and to wait for his son from the heavens, which he has raised. So that's that hope. And that's one thing that you see of the rapture. So in verse, in chapter 2, in, uh, in verse 19, for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming. And uh, chapter 3 and verse 13. To the end he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God. Even our Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. There goes another reference. And of course you have uh, chapter 4 verse 13 through 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus, so that's the saved that are dead, and 
will God bring, remember the Thessalonians where uh, they were worried about their fault, their dead, uh, their loved ones who were dead and that they, they were going to be in this rapture. And you see uh, that they will. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So this is the hope, our hope of the rapture. Then you go into chapter 5 and verse, so this, uh, like I said, we're just kind of skimming through because we're going to try and finish up Thessalonians. So this is that book. These are kind of some points on here. And you see that word, but, now it switches. It goes back to prophecy. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord, remember we have the day of Christ and the day of the Lord. So the day of the Lord is, uh, prof uh, prophetical so cometh as a thief in the night for when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travaileth upon a woman with child and they shall not escape it's basically saying when it happens there's no escape they're going to feel that wrath remember right now God is a God of peace today man is having his day but this is going to be God's day where he's going to have his day. And everyone asks, oh, why is God allowing these things? Well, guess what? There's a time where he's not going to allow these things anymore. And that's what they call the day of the Lord. All right. And uh, and then you see that, that word but in verse 4. And it goes back to us. Back to the mystery. Back to a different program. So, but ye brethren. And goes on goes on with the day of... Uh, children of light and all those things so um and then verse 11 where verse 10 in chapter 5 who died for us and whether we wake or sleep we should live no i'm sorry verse 9 for god hath not appointed us to wrath but to obtain salvation by our lord jesus christ and you see that there that you see the wrath this is a pre-trib this is that the tribute that the rapture is going to happen before the wrath and that's proof right there that he has not appointed us to wrath but to obtain salvation that's that salvation of the wrath and that rapture all right so uh, we are starting in verse 12 so first Thessalonians uh, chapter 5 and verse 12 and now we are getting into our text and uh, here we go. And we beseech you, that's urge you, we urge you, brethren, to know them which, which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. So there's a lot in there. We can do a whole thing on just that alone. We're going to kind of get into that, get into it a little bit. But uh, notice and to, to know them which labor among you. Okay and are over you in the Lord. So that's basically saying, okay, who is them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord? All right, these are spiritual leaders, spiritual people. They, God wants us to recognize and esteem them. Um, there are a bunch of people here in this church, this local church, who are leaders who work and labor among the Lord. You have teachers, you have people who... Uh, who work behind the scenes there's there's a whole list of people that are working amongst the Lord so we know that everyone we have a, a equal standing in the eyes of the Lord when you're our salvation the Lord sees us all the same here on earth there is a hierarchy I guess where um, people are over each other and it's not over to where they're you know telling you this, I'm still getting into this, so we're going to kind of let the Bible explain itself here. But let's go to Ephesians chapter 4 and, and verse 7. So there's a lot of people, like I said here, they don't labor for money. They don't labor for recognition. They, they, they know that the Lord sees them. They don't let the world, they're not 
asking the world to say, oh, you did such a good job. Actually, we are supposed to, in love, tell each other, hey, you did a good job. We were doing good, you know. And um, So this is within the church. And um, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 7. So... And then as you read these scriptures, so it's so good to just see the scripture itself and just, it just explains itself. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of, of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it, what is it, but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. So that's a verse there that shows that that uh, the Lord, when he died, he went to the center of the earth. Now that he ascended, what is it but that also that he descended first in the lower parts of the earth. So that's uh, where you see that the um, that shale, that uh, hell had two compartments. It had a paradise and a torment side. And we know that the Lord went to the paradise side. Um, so we, and you see that he went into the earth. He that descended is the same, verse 10, also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. So that each person, some people have certain roles that they play and, um, and as these spiritual leaders. Verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints. So we, when we come to church, we edify each other. We, you know, build each other up because we're the body of Christ. Each part of the body is, a, you know, has its job, has its, everyone is important in the body of Christ. For the perfecting of saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith, and so the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of stature of the fullness of Christ. And that's what we're trying to we're trying to measure up to our Lord. And you know, and Christ has made us complete in Him. He's gave us a complete Bible, and He wants us to be a complete grown adult in Him, when um, and to be there for each other. And verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. Uh, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking in truth and love, and may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So every wind of doctrine, there's that's. It's a strong verse there, so you know that's what's happening in the world. People hear something and it's and it's just not sound, and they're just getting tossed to and fro. And here we are trying to uh, rightly divide and to uh, make sure that the scriptures are divided in a way to where we understand what's written to us and what's not written to us. And sadly, a lot of the churches, a lot of the church today are reading and understanding things that are not written to them. They're, you know, and taking it as their own. But um, I digress on that. Let's go to 1 Timothy 5.17. So a little for a while here, we're going to be bouncing around. 1 Timothy 5.17. And right now we're kind of touching base so you've seen that they had the apostles evangelists so I just kind of want a and remember here in Faith Bible Church we try to study scripture with scripture we compare spiritual things with spiritual things and let the Bible explain itself first Timothy 5 and verse 17 let the elders that rule so we have elders here in our church let the either, let the elders that rule well be that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the world in the word and doctrine. So that's study, you know, that doctrine. So um, in Ecclesiastes twelve twelve it says that much study is weariness of the flesh. That so studying actually makes the flesh makes your body tired. So study is work. 
And what does God say in Second Timothy 2? Study to show thyself approved that you're a workman. So, um, just letting you guys know that we all know that. We read a book, we're like, oh. You know, sometimes you start yawning and you get tired. Well, it's work, you know. It's weariness of the flesh, God says. Uh, so when you're studying, don't take it as being void. You know, it's not in vain. God sees you. When you're by yourself there and you're learning, God sees you. And he's, and he's appreciating every moment when you're doing with, when you're doing that. So, but I wanted to touch, let the elders rule. So it's kind of saying, hey, there's a hierarchy, there's a, you know, like I said, I'm not going to get too much in it because I don't know too much about it. But let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 28. And you'd be surprised when you talk about one verse, you could just bounce back. Oh, you know, you could just go back and forth and God's Word just keeps going, you know? That's the beauty of God's Word. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 28. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, second, secondarily prophets, uh, thirdly teachers, after, the mir after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of, of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles. Um, so we know that there's no apostles and prophets today. That's something we still have teachers, uh, we still have helps, we still have governments, um, and, but we don't have the diversities of tongues. We don't speak in tongues, we're not supposed to be baptizing, you know, that's, it's just, um, that's a whole subject in itself, but we have a spiritual baptism where it's not with water, it's with when you become saved. You're, you're saved with that spiritual baptism made without hands. So, um, in the, and you have, and we're a, a certain circumcision made without hands. Okay, so that's that chain of command there. So, on your eye off time, you want to study it, ask questions. I'm sure some of the elders here know more about it than me. And uh, Pastor Ricky. But I do want to show you, so basically, what these leaders are doing are they are leading in service. Everyone here is servicing each other. So we should give our lives as a living So serving others will lead you. Um, no, I want to get into that here in a little bit. But we should give our lives as a living sacrifice for other people. If you love people, you will serve them instead of waiting for them to serve you. And um, remember, God is a God of order, so that's what God wants, a certain order in things, and that kind of reflects respect, and um, he's always setting things in order, and you'll see here in a little bit why in the, in the future verses. Um, let's go to, so let, we're going to see an example of Christ serving, and we're going to see an example of Paul serving. So let's see what our Lord Jesus Christ in Mark 10, let's go to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. All right. Verse 37. Okay. They said unto him, Grant unto us that we may sit one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand in thy glory. So these um, James and John wanted to sit right next to the Lord and rule with him and be like, hey, or you know what I mean? So they're like, hey, we're going to rule and run this show. And so that's what these guys went and asked the Lord. Uh, but Jesus said unto them, You know not what ye ask. Can ye drink of the cup what I drink of, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said unto him, We can. And Jesus said unto them, Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of, 
and with the baptism that I am baptized with all shall ye be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left, left hand is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be much displeased with James and John. So the other ten were like, dude, you guys are trying to come on. Come on, man, get in the back, you know. But Jesus called them, <laughs> but Jesus called them to him and saith unto them, Ye know that they which are counted to rule over the Gentiles. So remember, they this is a different program. Remember who's writing, who are they writing to? This is different language than we are in Paul. Okay? Uh, ye know that they which are counted to rule over the Gentiles. Remember, Israel was the is a chosen nation. This is their trying to accept the kingdom now and, and the Lord's trying to offer this He's going to be offering it exercise lordship over them and their great ones exercise authority upon them but so shall it not be among you but whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister and whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be the servants of all for even the son of man came not to be ministered unto but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So basically, whatever you're getting out of that is that the Lord said, I came to serve. That's what he's saying. I came to serve. I didn't come here to be served on at this time. Right now, I'm here to serve others. And he's saying that those who are servants are chiefest of all. So we're going to get into this service, this serving bit. And, uh, man, I'm going to... Uh, go, let's go to Luke chapter 22. We're going to have another example here that we're all familiar with. I think everybody's familiar with this. Luke chapter 22 and verse 25. I think this is... No, the, the next one is going to be more familiar. Luke chapter 22 and verse 25. And he said unto them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. Here we go again, more of that language. And they say that exercising authority upon them are also benefactors. But ye shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you, among you, let him be as the younger. And he that is chief, as he that doth serve. For whether is greater he that sitteth at me, or he that, he that serveth. Is not he that sitteth at me, but I am among you as he that serveth. That's Christ saying, I'm, he, I'm as one among you, I'm one that serves. Let's go to John 13. Yeah, we're going to bounce in a little bit here. But basically, my just John 13, verse 12. The gist that I'm trying to get here is that here in our church and in churches beyond, in our grace churches that, uh, the leaders and the people behind the scenes, you know, uh, they um, are serving them. That's what they're doing. They're serving the Lord, serving others. And I'm going to tell you why it's so good in this verse here. Chapter 13 and verse 12. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments... And was set down again, and said unto them, Know ye not what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Now this isn't about washing the feet. It's about the humbleness that comes with it. And, you know, like today, people are trying to wash, they're doing the ministry of washing each other's feet which is fine and dandy, but that's not, that they're focusing on this example instead of the real example, which is being humble. And so it goes, it's just a, it's just, a, you know, to wash someone's feet is like, you know, that's like, you got to really be, you're getting on your knees, you're getting lower, you know, cleaning all the dirt. So it's just a humble aspect of it. Um, for I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sends him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if you do them. So basically, when you serve others, you're going to be a happy person. 
when you serve yourself, you're 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 kind of making a recipe there of misery, of sorrow, because if it's just something we all know. We've seen in movies and real life. When you're a selfish person, you are not a very happy person. When you're a selfless person, this is a principle of the Lord. This is we're not talking some, you know, uh, Hallmark card that we read. This is the Lord's principles that when you follow something like this, it's going to make you a very honorable and happy person, you know. And that's, that's, it's good. You know, everyone's laughing, you're happy. There's nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? We want to be enjoying what we're doing here. So, um, like I said, this is something to keep in mind because we do get selfish at times. For the littlest things, you know. And to help others, you know, that guy, you know, the old saying, I'll give you the shirt off my back. You know, that's basically saying you'll help them almost no matter what. You know, like I'm there for you. And that's the Christian way. That's the Christian love, that faith, hope, and love. That's what Paul was looking for in these churches. And um, that's what leaders are supposed to emulate. And thank the Lord that we have that here in Faith Bible Church. With us, with the leaders and sir, and the people who labor here, so thank you for that. I'm grateful for everyone here. That's here and not here because there's people that are not here that are behind the scenes too. And remember, the Lord sees you, so keep on, keep on striving. Um. Okay, finally went through those verses. So now, basically, what I want to say, and just to to, to finish off on that. Leaders should lead by example and not by constraint, meaning by force or by uh, manipulation. So uh, the power is in the local church. Uh, you hear of denominations where far off denominations are running every single church in every part of the country. That is not how God ordained it, where if somebody from another far land was saying, hey, you can't teach that, that's bad doctrine. No, the Lord says within the local church, this is how within the, the, the elders and the pastor and whoever that you guys figure it out here. And instead of taking orders from a far off dynasty or whatever, and denomination, there's plenty to name out there, which I won't name. All right. So, uh, and that over you in the Lord there is... Like the teachers or pastors, he's not over you in your politics. He's not over you in how much money you should give. He's not over you in the clothes you should wear. He's not over you in um, in uh, who you should marry. He's not over you in none of your things. He's just there. The pastor and uh, and the leaders are there to show you what the Bible says about those issues. You know, not to constrain you and. Uh, let's go back to First Thessalonians in chapter five. Right. In chapter five, and you have that admonish. So that admonish, so and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Admonish is like basically a firm warning about a fault. So admonishing is saying, "Hey, you're doing something you're not supposed to." That's what we call constructive criticism. Don't take it personal when a, another believer is saying, hey, bro, you're doing something that that is not a good idea, okay? You're falling into a certain... And that's, you know, amongst men and women, you know, when you're, you're trying to edify. And that's what the admonishing, where you're kind of, you know... And that's, I believe that's a healthy thing that Christians should, you know, that we do. We lift each other up, but at the same time, we admonish each other. Um, okay, moving forward. Verse 13. Wow. That was, a, okay. And to esteem them very highly in the love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. So, to esteem is to determine value. So, like, to respect and, to respect and admiration of... Uh, to esteem for their work's sake, even if you don't like them, they're working for the Lord. You know, these leaders are working for the Lord and the Thessalonians, so that should be an honor in itself. They're working hard for the Lord. They may be snobby at times. You, they, they rub you the wrong way. 
but give them that respect anyways because they're 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 putting their time and effort in for the furtherance of the gospel. Is is everything sounding? Is everything clear? Or okay. All right. I was a little nervous about these passages because I didn't know how to present it. So, um, uh, so that peace among yourselves there in verse thirteen. So the Thessalonians. Remember, Paul had about a month with them, so they all basically got saved at the same time. So they're probably juggling, um, you know, like who's going to be running this, who's going to be doing this. So Paul's saying, hey, have peace among yourselves. And, um, you know, and to show respect for the laborers that you have there in the Lord. Uh, verse 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, that's that, that uh, we exhort you, brethren, Warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, and be patient toward all men. And remember, what we're doing here is verse-by-verse scripture. Anybody listening for the first time, this is a verse-by-verse. We're going verse-by-verse. This is a good way to study so, to read, to go over the Bible. The Thessalonians, so some of the Thessalonians quit their job. And you see that in in later on in, in the next chat in the next uh in second thessalonians uh some were probably headstrong some were probably argumentative argumentative or just however you know so they uh that's that unruly some were feeble-minded so that's the mental people who have mental problems they sometimes they can't work sometimes it's hard for them to do things and then you have the weak the uh, support the weak, be patient toward all men. So that's a physical, physical ailments, and we are to be patient with all of them. Patience is a key aspect of our walk in Christ. Sometimes we get impatient. I know I do, and it's something to work on. Patience with each other. Because remember, we're all part of the body of Christ. We're all family. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. It's just how the Lord made it. And, you know, sometimes we don't agree, and sometimes we do. And sometimes it's just that patience. All right, so verse, oh, I do want to get into 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Let's do that. And this will be probably our last, uh, our last, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. This will be our last reference probably. And we're going to make our way to the end of the. This is what's called. The love chapter. First Corinthians chapter thirteen. And we can go to this is a good chapter here. Let's go to just verse one. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I become as a Sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Charity is another word for love. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understanding all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, and though I'm all the great in this and that, and I know everything, and so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. So you can have all these great things. If you don't have love for your fellow, fellow brethren, the Lord says, you are nothing. And this is the Apostle Paul, our, our Apostle that we're supposed to be following. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not love, it profited me nothing. Verse 4. Charity, so if you're doing all these things to look good, and you have no love behind it, you're nothing. That's what the Lord is saying here. Verse 4. Charity Suffer, this is the verse I wanted to get to. Charity suffereth long. Love suffereth long. That's that patience, forbearance, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Love does not envy his brother, whether he's doing better than him or not, whether he's got more money than him or not, whether he's got things. The envieth not. Don't envy your brother. Charity vaunteth not. It's not puffed up. It's not, I'm this and I'm that. That's not what love is. Love is being humble. Now, there's a, there's, it's good to be confident. It's 
good to be to hone your skills and to have confidence and to be a professional. And the, what is it? The Lord says to, to to be to have that perfection in Christ, to be the best that you can be, but to be puffed up and act like you're Billy, you know this and that. The Lord doesn't like that. He doesn't like that at all. And our and that's what leaders are not supposed to be emulating and. Like I said again, thank you for this church because everyone here is solid. Alright, so let's go back to 1 Thessalonians. And I think we're going to read it through. We have 10 minutes. We're going to read it through here. So basically the gist of what I'm getting here is that we got a, a, a somewhat understanding of the book of 1 Thessalonians. We know it's about the rapture. We know that you, So we know that it's the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We know at least these principles. Because remember, what are principles? Principles are the things that come first. Those are to understand principle is to understand is to have understanding in certain things. And I think a lot of people go out in life and they don't understand principles. And God's principles, there's many principles here that the Lord there's grace. There's so and and a principle that we have here is that we have hope and that's in our heavenly hope and that's this rap that's what first Thessalonians is trying to convey all right so uh, verse 15 see that none render evil for evil unto any man but ever follow that which is good um, both among yourselves and to all men so don't repay evil for evil if someone does some evil to you don't do some evil back. Uh, that's, I mean, that goes without saying. But how many times do we actually do that? And remember, we're we're trying to go in context here. So it just got done talking about the spiritual leaders, those over you. So, uh, what do you want to be? A good example, you know, the congregation, the pastor, teachers, whoever. That's just to be a good example, um, and to follow good. So basically, flee rebellion, flee ill will, them mischievous conniving. Someone did you wrong, so you're holding it in, and you're about to do it in the, in a week from now because you got it planned out. Oh, well, there's people like that. Go to, they're out there, and they they're good at it. So you know, so we don't want to be like that. Um, verse 16, rejoice evermore. That rejoicing, that's a that's a strong word right there. I mean, um, we are accepted in the beloved. We have eternal salvation. That alone is to rejoice at all times. You are, the Lord sees you, loves you, 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 all of you. He sees you, you're accepted. It's not like, oh, hey, you can tag along, and, you know, maybe I'll accept you. No, you're accepted, you're in, you're in the club. The Lord, you're part of the body of Christ. You, ha you're, you are a citizen of heaven. That is to rejoice every day you wake up. Oh, man, I'm a citizen of heaven. Hey, man, thank the Lord. Rejoice all the time, you know. Man, this guy's a citizen too. He's my brother in Christ. Man, when we die, we're going to live forever. That's basically what it is. We're going to die. When you die, we're going to see each other. All, every single person in here, when you're saved, we're going to live eternally after this. Um, so, you know, the Father sees us in Christ, not in our sins. Your sins have been slayed clean. Now he sees you. He wants you to conduct yourselves accordingly um you know even in our sorrows um a happy and thankful heart will go a long way for the lord and will be more rewarding so just we have sorrows every individual in here has sorrows so but to keep to, to it'll be more rewarding you know and we're trying to stay in the context of leaders and but this can be for anyone too because this is a principle all right Verse 17, pray without ceasing. He doesn't say to pray uh, just nonstop when I'm like, like, you know, like you can't pray nonstop. <laughs> yeah, that's impossible. So he's just saying whenever you can, pray. Whenever you, whenever something happens, pray. You have free access to the Lord. You literally have free access to the Lord. You literally can talk to the Lord anytime you want. And the Lord will hear you because you are accepted in the Beloved. See how it all, it all starts. It's all a domino effect. So uh, you don't need another human, another a father, or anybody to be your intermediate. The Lord Jesus Christ is our intermediate. 
we, we that's why we say that we pray to the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our mediator. The Lord speaks on us. He is our guy who's representing us, and He dwells in us. The Lord is everything, and He created everything. Hear what anybody says. Yeah, so they, you know they they teach a lot of uh, uh, um, pre, they they teach they're teaching stuff to our children, saying that there is no God and that there is a big bang, and we know that's not true. Um, verse eighteen, uh, and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. When something's going wrong, give thanks because when because I I I believe it's. When something's going, when something bad's happening, something good is happening at the same time. You just have to find it. So even in during the good times, give thanks. The Lord, this is the will of God to so constantly give thanks for our health, that we can wake up this morning, that we can just get up and talk and get up and be happy and be, to to go out about our lives. Um, so that's just being grateful and gratitude and gladness. Uh, verse 19, quench not the spirit. So basically, grieve not the spirit. You know, don't satisfy evil. Don't, don't let it, don't let this, don't, I mean, you're going to do something you're not supposed to do, and it can give you a long-lasting effect. If you do something wrong, that's, that's, it's a sin, and it's something that can affect you in, your, in the long run of your life. That's great. You know, you grieve the spirit when you do it. The spirit is so quench not the spirit. I guess it's similar. Um, despise not prophesy, prophesying. So basically, I guess when I don't know too much, but um, when Paul wrote this letter, prophesying was still going around. Uh, I don't know too much about that, but if that's true, then. The truths of, the, of all the, the all the truths of the mystery were not yet revealed. The Bible wasn't complete yet, so he's saying these things. It could be something different. If you have something different, let me know. Um, verse twenty-one. Uh, prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Test all things. Uh, we are to um, find out if them things are so. If somebody's saying something that is probably not right, you can go up to them and be like, hey, I don't think that's right, or I don't think that's accurate, or we're, all, we're supposed to have in mind to, to question and make sure these things are so, or to the pastor, to, you know, in all of life. So you can keep your mind turning, keep your mind studying, keep your mind sharp, and be like, uh, let me make sure that's good. Let me prove that. You know, let me test that. All right? So, all right. Um, 20, verse 22 abstain from all appearance of evil the stay away from anything that's evil being in the wrong place at the wrong time happens just stay away from evil you know you can be in front of a bar you don't drink you don't do that or you can be over in a group of people and you know you, someone sees you they're like hey that guy was on TV he's talking about God and look at him he's over there at the bar you know or he's, anything you know it's it's, that can be an example, or uh, just, you, we know, stay away from evil. And the very God, verse 23, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. There goes another mention of the, the rapture. Um, if you, there's a little tidbit here. Uh, so that sanctify, that's your walk, sanctity, that walk in sanctification, and the spirit, soul, and body. Remember, God has numbers, and so we have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. We have the body here, we have our spirit, we have two natures, and then we have the um, the soul, which is kind of like the the personality, and the soul is what goes on, and well, yeah. So, all right, and so that's a little bit there. Verse 24, faithful is he that calleth you and also will do it. That's the Lord. The Lord is the one who's sanctifying. He does the reconciling. He, he's, it's his love for us, you know, that's so great. Even though we love him, it's actually what he has done for us. 
he could easily just swipe us away and be like, I don't want you, but he doesn't. And, for, and he just loves us that much. Brethren, pray for us. And greet all the brethren with an holy kiss. Uh, that's uh, We know that a kiss is a custom that um, people do in different uh, ra uh, uh, nations. And I know my family, we greet each other with a kiss. But what he's basically saying here is greet each other warmly and heartily. You know, like we say, hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Like, you know, give that handshake and be like, hey, what's up? You know, uh, it's good to see you. Like, heartily, you know, like, that's what basically, like, have a good, warm, like, uh, when you see somebody. I charge you by, verse 27, I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. So when I we close First Thessalonians, Paul is saying here, hey, tell this to everyone. Tell this to all the whole, all everyone in that congregation. And that's how the Lord wants us to do with each other and to everyone outside of these walls. Tell this to everyone. So, um, thank you for listening to me. And if anybody's got any questions, comments, go ahead. If not, then we will go ahead. Sounds like it. Yeah, and being tossed to and fro, yeah, because uh, to prove things and don't not to be tossed to and fro, because it's easy. You, you hear something that sounds, I've heard things that sounded great, and they were like, and it, they were giving uh, examples, but if I didn't know the Bible, and I didn't have this faith, I didn't know certain things, I would have thought it was the, the truth. And it was saying that, you know what I mean? It was saying that God wasn't real. It was a, literally a whole, it was saying that there, that through the stars, it was a whole thing that I watched this thing. And if I would have watched it, not in, when I didn't have my growth, I probably would have thought that was accurate. So the, the people, that's why for us, we got to get the message out there because there are people that watching that video and they're like, hey, that sounds good. And it did sound good. I'm telling you. I, I was, I, I'm like, man, this is scary. How, no, no joke. So I did my uh, my homework on what they were talking about. And you can find, you'll find it up to prove that those things, what that said was wrong and inaccurate. And that it's a, it's a, it's a very strong deception to get us away from what it is. There's too much proof out there. There's too much proof. That there's a that let alone there's a creator. There's too much proof that I mean I'm not going to get into this, but you have the the I'm just going to say this, and it doesn't have to be a comment or anything. But when the Olympics, when they are they're the biggest of of all, they're number one athletes in the world. That everyone has seen it. This and this is encompassing all nations on the planet. And when you're mocking the God of the Bible in that, that's showing you that there's an agenda that Satan is behind that agenda in the world. That's Why would you mock only the God of the Bible and not mock anything else? I'm sorry. It's all in your face. Why wouldn't you, you know what I mean? Like you're going to mock the God of the Bible and the biggest stage of athleticism and make a whole scene. It's, it's a whole agenda. So when you dive deep, into what's going on in this world, it just it points right back to the Lord. So thank God that we have the Lord. All right, so anything else? All right, I'll close in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for our minds and our hearts that we can figure these things out. Please give us the courage and the wisdom, your, your courage, your wisdom. Give us your strength. Let the Holy Spirit be our teacher to see these things and to overcome them and to... Uh, and to not let those things uh, invade our faith and invade 
uh, what we know mm -hmm. to be true. And we uh, hopefully this um, this today was helpful to somebody that they could uh, take what was told, what was heard, and and apply it to their lives. And that's just another step forward to further your your agenda, Lord, what you want. And then you want all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And uh, we're glad that we're saved. We rejoice evermore. And uh, those who are not here, we pray for them. And those who are sick, those who have ailments, and we, we pray for them dearly. And um, we're just grateful for the things we have, the things we don't have. And thank grateful for this church, and we're grateful for each other, and we're grateful for our leaders. And we're grateful for those that labor in you, Lord, and give you all honor and glory and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.